Hi, my name is Yoav Lieberman. I am a woodworker for 20 years now, uh, working a lot with reclaimed wood and reclaimed material. And I've been writing a book about reclaimed wood for FW uh, Media. I wanted to show you a few of the uh, resources that we can uh, reclaim and make use in order to make beautiful furniture. Uh, a lot of the reclaimed material, reclaimed wood, is uh, barn wood, uh, pallet wood, uh, furniture we find on the side of the street. And they have potential, but also uh, include um, uh, hardware and paint that we need to take care of before we process them. So the processing of reclaimed wood is the subject of this short video. And we're going to talk about, in particular, about metal hardware that is embedded in reclaimed wood. Uh, that metal hardware can be easy to extract as long as we find out where it is. So the first thing we need to do is to identify it. Let me show you a few of the tools we use to identify and then extract the embedded hardware in the reclaimed wood board. So um, when we look at a, a board like this, probably extracted from an old barn um, that has all the hallmark of reclaimed material, reclaimed wood, uh, it has this beautiful surface patina. Even if we want to uh, preserve the surface patina for our next project, whether it's uh, furniture or cladding of a wall, we still have to take care of those nails and maybe a screw here. Um, if we want to process this board, not just install it in the house, we definitely need to take out those uh, uh, metal hardware. Otherwise, they're going to make damage to our uh, saws, joiners, planers, etc. Tools that we use to process the wood. Uh, we can see here uh, a nail that is uh, protruding above the surface, which is very easy to extract. Um, over here we see a sunken nail. Um, sunken nails are, are a little bit more difficult to extract. We're going to show you how to do that. Uh, next uh, tier in category or category t of uh, difficulty of extraction are nails or screws uh, whose head been decapitated. So one of the tools that I really like to use is a metal detector. Um, when you uh, scope over the surface of the board, it will beep when a metal hardware is in embedded under the wood, surface of the wood, or under paint, because a lot of cases uh, uh, reclaimed uh, material, reclaimed wood, is painted over and, so, and, and hides over the hardware. So when we, we pass the metal detector over a surface, yeah, when we pass it over a surface that doesn't have a, an embedded hardware in it, fastener, it would not beep. But when we go over the specific fastener that is embedded, it's supposed to, supposed to, to beep, like here. And this is our little uh, nail that uh, its head broke off, which we will have to take over. Uh, sometimes you can use a chalk or a crayon or a pencil to highlight that area in a color that you can identify later. After we identified the uh, nails, fasteners, screws, um, and we marked them, we're ready to uh, extract them. Um, if the surface of the wood is very important for us, in order, in order to preserve its patina, we want to make sure that we harm it the least. Um, the first thing I do is I try to extract the easiest uh, fasteners to extract. And in this case, we see a nail that it has it protrude above the surface. Um, it might look like an easy job to do, but sometimes the nail is actually bent on the other side. So what I try to do is try to uh, flip the board to the other side and straighten the na nail as much as I can. I'll take a, a pray bar or a cat paws tool and or you can use also a, a nipper or a pair of pliers. Uh, these are all legit tools to straighten the nail. Uh, even an, uh, a hammer is a good tool to use. Um, you position the pray bar and then you try gently with, you, with the help of uh, pliers you actually get it almost straight. At this point, you can grab a hammer, put some sort of a board underneath, scrap material, and uh, bang it out as much as you can. We can do it to the other side too, 
but I'm going to actually leave the this nail over here sunken in because I want to show you another technique of extracting a nail. Sometimes it's impossible to reach a board from the underside so all our operation has to go from the face side. Okay, I'm going to flip it over. Now we have one nail that is almost um, ex um, released from the board and the other one is sunken. Um, in order to protect the surface, as I mentioned, some, a lot of times we, we covet reclaimed material, reclaimed wood, for the surface patina. So I don't want to, in, to dent it unnecessarily. Uh, I will grab a piece of scrap material, a thin piece of, of wood is good, a thin piece of metal. And with the help of, again, we have the option of using a cat paw with uh, its uh, very uh, sharp claws here. Uh, a nipper is another tool, some sort of a, a prey bar. Sometimes they're called nail, nail pullers. We, and of course, the traditional uh, hammer. We can position it over the sacrificial board or the liner, put the claws inside, and lever this nail out. Um, as we leave, uh, lever it out, we want to space up the hammer as, ne as needed in order to prevent a too much of an arch extraction. So you start with a, uh, a thin material, and then you put another spacer over it. Okay, we got rid of the first fasteners. Now we're going to talk about the sunken head nail. Um, let's assume that in this case it wasn't uh, possible for us to access the other side of the board and we can only extract this nails from the, from the face side. One of the uh, most practical tools to uh, extract sunken nails uh, where the head is still intact is, and on this, the surface of the wood is a cat paw. Uh, this tool that has uh, a flat uh, head over here and um, claws here and an anvil head here uh, allows us to uh, drive it under the head of the nail and uh, lever the nail out part of the way, making way for a more uh, robust tool like a prey bar to complete the mission. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm positioning the claws just in front of the head and I'm grabbing a, a hammer and I'm trying to drive the claws under the head. At this point I'm going to advance the sacrificial board and try to lever the nail above the surface of the wood. I get the nail to extend to about a, a quarter of an inch or so and then it goes back to the same technique as I showed before, a hammer, a prey bar or a nipper with the help of a sacrificial board. When you use the, the cat paw uh, it's almost inevitable that you will make some damage to the surface of the wood. Um, but again, if that's your only way to get an, a fastener out that's the only way. So what do we do when we have a nail whose head been decapitated and it's hard for us to uh, put a cat paws underneath it or the tip of a hammer claws? Uh, what we can do is to try to use a vice grip, maybe a small nose uh, 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 pliers and try to grab it. But sometimes when the nails are sunken too deep or uh, in cases when there's um, embedded into oak and oak tend to grab nails extremely strong, 
then what I do, I try to make a round trench around the nail, break the wood and extract the nail. Uh, what I use, I use a, a, a cup saw or hole saw. Um, there are a few diameters. This one is a three quarter of an inch diameter, but you can get half an inch diameter, the more common diameter I use. Um, and uh, I drill around the nail head and then I extract the nail. It's a very nice uh, technique to use. Um, the only thing you need to remember is that uh, in order to center the cup saw around that area, you need to build a template. Um, take a scrap piece of wood and if you don't have a drill press, mount the cup saw in a drill or a cordless drill. Uh, take a piece of scrap piece of wood and drill through. So after we've made the template, I want to uh, disconnect the center uh, drill bit from the uh, cup saw. Um, most of them are um, tightened in with an Allen key, uh, sorry, an Allen screw. I'm going to grab an Allen wrench, open up the screw and take the drill out. Then I will mount it back into the chuck of a cordless or corded drill. Now I want to uh, clamp <coughs> the template over the embedded hardware. Uh, this fastener, which in, in our case it's uh, probably a cut nail, could be a, a, a stubborn screw or even a bolt. And that's why I mentioned that there are a few diameters for the cup saw. But for most small to medium uh, uh, nails and screws, a half an inch is a great size to have in your tool belt. So I'm going to clamp it and as it's secured I can grab back um, the drill and start drilling around the fastener. Once you kind of uh, drilled it to about a quarter of an inch, you can release the template and drill without it. Uh, what will normally happen is that the wood is going to be uh, decomposed or disintegrate around the nail which will give you enough space and purchase to extract the fastener with simple pliers or um, uh, vice grip. So if we are now at this position, we can grab the nail. It's still stubborn, so let's keep drilling. And it's out. Um, one uh, piece of advice regarding uh, those kind of uh, situations, some people used to uh, recommend using uh, a dull chisel to excavate around it. It can work, but I find that this technique is easier uh, and faster to use. This, this hole that uh, was left by the cup saw can be plugged with a plug that you make yourself on the lathe or if you cut a dowel rod or you make the plug with a plug cutter on the drill press. Embedded uh, screws are sometimes very difficult to extract because um, they have threads that grabs the wood very nicely and if we, when we try to lever the fastener out the threads grab the wood around it and make a real big damage into our reclaim board. Um, so 
the other way to take it out would be to try to unscrew it using an impact driver that has the adequate uh, bit installed in it. But sometimes because of uh, rust or because of pre-attempt um, to extract the fastener, the um, socket at the head of the screw is completely messed up. And the only way to try to take it out is to drill a shallow pilot hole and then insert into it a dedicated tool that allows it to allow the, um, the screw to be extracted counterclockwise. Uh, those uh, specialized tools called uh, screw extractors come in different shapes. This one has a, a simple cone he uh, head with a uh, uh, counterclockwise spiral. The first thing I'm trying to do, I'm trying to drill a shallow pilot hole, use a regular drill bit that matches approximately the uh, tip diameter of the cone. Uh, if you use uh, oil, uh, it would be easier to drill. Anytime you drill metal, it's best to put some sort of a lubricant, an oil, or a dedicated uh, um, milling fluid. So you put a little bit there, and then you uh, mount the drill bit in a uh, cordless drill or corded drill, and you try to drill in. If it's a uh, mild steel, which is the steel used in the uh, fasteners uh, until recent decades, and most reclaimed wood will be probably embedded with fasteners made from soft steel, it would be an easy job. After we drill to about an eighth of an inch, a little bit more, maybe a quarter of an inch. You can insert into the drill the special extractor, uh, position it into the reverse revolutions. We need to check it. And then we try to get it out. If it doesn't, doesn't work, you can go on to the next diameter of the extractor, which is this one. Hopefully that will grab the hole better. In this short presentation, I showed you a few techniques how to extract fasteners from reclaimed wood. That allows us to introduce that precious material into our shop and into the use of a joiner or a planer or other hand tools without hurting them. Um, in uh, the book that I'm uh, publishing with uh, FW uh, Media, I'm going to talk about other techniques of processing and initiating reclaimed wood, how to use it, how to design with it, how to be inspired by other makers uh, in order to use this beautiful material and prevent it from being dumped into the landfill. Um, I hope you enjoy this presentation, and until next time.